John C. Taylor has spent his life turning his dreams into reality. Aragon Moor is one of his proudest creations. A home he built from scratch and one of the Isle of Man's most beautiful locations. Ever since his early years, he's had a passion for making things that are truly unique. And he's constantly fulfilling his ambitions with new inventions that have changed the world. From inventing the controls for the automatic kettle to designing the world's most original clock. Dr. Taylor is a creative genius and he's never stopped inventing things. Hardly surprising then that Aragon Moor has many outstanding and unique features. A tailor-made home by one of Britain's greatest inventors. I've had a lot of fun in my life trying to change the world in my work and then my passions outside work have been flying and clocks and this is part of my clock collection. We'll see some more of my clocks later, but in the meanwhile, we're gonna start off going down to the hangar uh, to see one of my other passions flying, and then to the workshop uh, to see the manufacturing. So this is Muska, and this is where the turbine is hidden away. It's remarkably small, and the actual engine is right inside there. So it's quite a small engine to produce 850 horsepower. Um, but its wonderful thing is that it's got about half the parts, well less than that, of any piston engine. And you haven't got all the pistons having to change direction all the time. So it's very, very smooth and quiet um, and efficient uh, means of uh, uh, power. The thing about Musker is you put the aeroplane on rather than just get into it. There we go. So you've got the pilot's screen, the multifunction display, and the pilot's screen on the other side. There's always something to do. You've always got to uh, cross-check, and you're quite a busy person all the time. You can't read a book or um, switch off. You've got to concentrate on flying the aeroplane all the time, uh, even with the autopilot. John started flying as a teenager, and he was hooked by his father, who was also an accomplished pilot. He was always destined to own his own planes, this a previous aircraft owned by Dr. Taylor. So is flying his biggest passion? I suppose it is, yes. It's lasted for uh, 60 years. I don't look back in life, I don't look back and think, oh, if only I could go skiing again, if only I could go mountaineering, oh, I'd love to go rock climbing again. I've done that and I've got the t-shirt, so you find something else that you can do and uh, really have fun in life. What, what's the point in looking back when you can still look forward? Okay. Next stop is the factory and the nearby workshop that brings to life John's many inventions. Pilot, inventor, horologist, he's multi-talented. So we've come down to Balthane, which is uh, an industrial estate um, near the airport in, in the Isle of Man. And here we've got all the equipment necessary to manufacture anything in metal. Uh, they're all precision uh, computer control machinery and we've got uh, some very skilled people on the Isle of Man here. I don't know what my most famous invention is. Um, I'm well known for being involved with kettle controls, but my most useful invention, I think, is this little bimetal blade uh, that I invented in the, in the 70s. It has a center leg, which then is used as an amplifier to sh get, create more movement out of a piece of bimetal when it goes click and we can make it actually perform, holding it so I don't burn my fingers in a pair of tweezers. And you can hear it go click, click. And if you put it on a cold surface, it'll jump up. So the bimetal here is a heat engine, 
because it changes heat into motion. And you can use that then to switch off a, a thermostat, switch off a kettle when it boils, or any other electrical appliance. We've gone from kettle controls to a cordless kettle at the back, to a cordless kettle in the middle, to an underfloor heating system, um, and then the ancillary inventions of the, uh, the kettle itself, um, how the element is fixed, how the, how, how the level indicators work and are illuminated, how scale is um, kept in the kettle, all sorts of inventions like that. And so it's, it becomes a, a raft of patents rather than just one particular one. I never liked doing what anybody else has ever done, and so if I was going to make a clock, it had to be completely different. I needed a new way of um, telling time, and I wanted the clock then to, to look different and be interesting, that would catch people's attention. And so I thought it'd be interesting to turn Harrison's invention of a grasshopper escapement which I'm sure only one in a million know how it works, uh, turn it inside out and then enlarge it uh, 50 times. And so instead of being against a little gear the size of a, um, a 50p piece with the little grasshopper on top, um, now the, it's a metre and a half in diameter with uh, a metre chronophage on top so that you could actually see how his invention worked. And so that was the, the basis of starting off on the chronophage. It's quite easy to come up with all sorts of ideas. The difficulty is to change the idea into a practical reality. And this workshop enables you to make prototypes and prove your, your idea and make it into a working uh, model. And then you can see the ac invention actually works. Whereas an idea is an idea is an idea, and that's it. We're still using the workshop to make the parts for the chronophage. And um, as a glimmer in the back of my eye, I'm trying to make a solar cooker, um, which would be used in third world countries, uh, particularly in disaster areas. Um, and it, it, it ticks all the right boxes because solar cookers um, relieve the deforestation of places like Africa, that whole forests are being cut down, turned into charcoal, sold to the local people, and when it's all gone, it's all gone. The motivation to create new inventions for the benefit of mankind is a never-ending passion for Dr. Taylor. His fascination with clocks is inspired by the impact of their very creation. It's impossible to imagine a world without clocks. It's impossible to imagine a home without clocks. People say the most important invention for mankind was the wheel. Um, I think that's untrue. I think the invention which changed mankind most of all was the clock. The wheel is the servant of mankind, but clocks control mankind and you can't imagine what life was like before you had clocks. Uh, it's everywhere now, it's on your wrist, it's on your telephone, it's on your coffee maker, it's on your television, it's everywhere. It's a completely different world. Not only has he made his own contribution to the history of clock making, John C. Taylor is the proud owner of arguably the world's most comprehensive collection of clocks. So this is a fascinating clock made by Azurus Fromentiel. And if you look at it, it's very easy to think that it's saying the time is 20 to 8. But it's not, because if you look very carefully, the minute hand goes round four times in an hour. So you're actually at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, it's 55 minutes past seven or five minutes to eight. Whereas you wouldn't recognize that, but it's an experimental clock. It's a very, very early clock made in about 1658 by Azurus Fromentiel. So I've taken the hood off the John Harrison uh, clock 
um, made in 1726 or thereabouts, and it's the first mechanism in the world designed to be low friction. But if you, if you look at the, the mechanism here, it has the first grasshopper escapement. And so the whole thing was made by a carpenter in the early 18th century, and it was more accurate than any clock made in London at the time, and became the most accurate clock in the world for 150 years after it was made. What inspired me to produce the Curonophage? I suppose uh, modern art. I complain about modern art because I think a lot of it is the uh, king's clothes, that there's nothing to it. Um, but it's one of my characteristics. It's no good complaining about something unless you're prepared to do something about it. And so I set myself the task to think of how to, to create something which was modern art and yet uh, actually did something. And time is not on your side, it's rather scary, so I changed the cuddly image of a Walt Disney grasshopper into a rather frightening time eater. And um, I thought it'd be fun if in a minute he slowly opened his jaws uh, wider and wider, and on the 59th second of every minute he went, ah! And he got that minute, he chewed it up, and he swallowed it, and then you could never get it back. I think it's very difficult to judge one's own inventions and uh, you're always very proud of what you've done. Uh, but the only proof of the pudding is in the eating and if other people uh, appreciate what you've done then it gives you a, an even greater satisfaction. Um, I can go to any high street in anywhere in the Western world and in a shop window selling kettles, I can say, I designed that one, I designed that one, I designed the controls, yes, controls, yes. And that gives you a wonderful pleasure. It's the same in the chronophage. Um, if there were museums or institutions or individuals um, who appreciated it, then it would give me great pleasure.